Trumpers after a mob of angry Trump supporters stormed Capitol Hill on January 6th. A number of prominent Trump administration officials decided that was it. That was the final straw. They had had enough, and they resigned abruptly. During his testimony Thursday, former Deputy National Security Advisor Matthew Pottinger explained the moment he knew it was time to leave. I, I was disturbed and worried to see that the president was attacking uh, Vice President Pence for doing his constitutional duty. So the tweet looked to me like the opposite of what, what we really needed at that moment, which was a de-escalation. Uh, and uh, that's why I, I had said earlier that it looked like fuel being poured on the fire. So that was the moment that I decided uh, that I was going to resign, that that would be my, my last day at the White House. Uh, I, I simply didn't want to be associated with, uh, uh, with the events that were unfolding on the Capitol. Joining us now is presidential historian Douglas Brinkley and CNN political commentator and host of Firing Line. I'm PBS Margaret Hoover. Thank you both so much for being here. And Doug, let me begin with you. I mean, you are a presidential historian, and I wonder how you think history will judge the work of this committee, and particularly uh, its members and those who testified, who sacrificed so much. For some of them, it will likely cost them their job. We just heard Adam Kinzinger detail threats to his six-month-old baby. As a result, how will history look at them in this work? Well, Poppy, this has been a slamming indictment against Donald Trump as being an anti-American demagogue, a bully, somebody with a dictatorial bent. Um, we forget that this isn't just about Democrats versus Republicans. Most of the people who uh, spoke in front of the committee were Republicans, were people that uh, were supportive of Donald Trump. Uh, Liz Cheney's going to go down in history as one of the heroes of our time, uh, just like uh, Margaret Chase Smith was when she went after Joe McCarthy. Um, can be remembered for this. No matter what happens in her Wyoming primary, she's going to be a gold star figure in American history mm -hmm. for putting democracy above, uh, you know, uh, grotesque self-interest like Donald Trump and some of his associates showed. So it was refreshing hear all these voices of democracy come forward, tell the truth, and let's, the, 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 the papers that these are generating, the trove of documents is going to be the first draft of history when all these books are written about the ugliness of January 6th. And Margaret, I thought it was so important that Congressman Kinzinger, in his closing remarks last night, used the word American experiment, because that's, that's what it is. It's not guaranteed, right? It's an experiment. And it's about all that has to be done to uphold this democracy. What does this mean for the future of your party? What does this moment and what happens from here on mean for the Republican Party going forward? Well, Poppy, I'm going to answer the question about the party. But first, I want to answer the question about the country. Because you said, what does this committee's work mean? And what will it mean in history? And the truth is, we don't know the end of this story. This is an ongoing, as Adam Kinzinger said, experiment. And Donald Trump wants to run for office again. He will likely run for president again. So the work of this committee is not finished. It is contributing to their constitutional duty in the face of a former president who absolutely abrogated or abrogated his trust with the American people and didn't do his constitutional duty. But we, the select committee, the public, the citizenry, we are in the process of upholding this experiment in democracy right now. And accountability to people who undermine the Constitution and trash the Constitution, in this case, the President of the United States, Donald Trump, former President, is critical. What it means for the Republican Party, the party that is frankly splintered and divided with a strong faction still supporting a man who undermines the Constitution. This puts, this, is, this puts our country at grave risk for the future. So this fight is not over. We continue to need to uphold and hold, uphold the Constitution and hold those responsible for undermining it accountable. And I think the Select Committee is doing its part. Liz Cheney very concisely summarized the case against Donald Trump last night. Can we just listen to also sound that was so striking? And important, I think, from Congresswoman Liz Cheney. This is at the end of the hearing. Here's what she said about the bravery of women throughout. Listen. We've seen bravery and honor in these hearings. 
And Ms. Matthews and Mr. Pottinger, both of you will be remembered for that, as will Cassidy Hutchinson. She sat here alone, took the oath, and testified before millions of Americans. She knew all along that she would be attacked by President Trump and by the 50, 60, and 70-year-old men who hide themselves behind executive privilege. But like our witnesses today, she has courage, and she did it anyway. Cassidy, Sarah, and our other witnesses, including Officer Caroline Edwards, Shay Moss, and her mother, Ruby Freeman, are an inspiration to American women and to American girls. Very quickly, Margaret, then Douglas, your thoughts on hearing that. I'm going to tell you, what Liz Cheney is referencing is that sexism is alive and well in this country, but it is alive and well in the GOP, and it was in the Trump White House. And for those women, Miss Cassidy and Miss Hutchins, to stand up showed great courage, an extra measure of courage against the backdrop of that sexism. And it shows that the men who aren't standing up and testifying and hiding behind executive privilege are showing an extra measure of cowardice, and it was worth pointing out. The older men, notably uh, Douglas Brinkley in particular, who had a lot more power, and uh, many of these younger women who have their whole careers at risk ahead of them, and they had the courage, Douglas. That's right, and the older men seem to be part of the Palm Beach clique of Mar-a-Lago. They don't want to alienate Donald Trump. They were cowardly and afraid, and we still haven't heard from so many important White House voices that hopefully we'll get a chance to. But I think Mike Pence has come out well, and Liz Cheney's come out well. And in Liz Cheney, all women should be proud because what she did was a magnificent job of prosecuting this case. And, and, it, and as Margaret so ably said, to be continued. This is going on in the fall. This story isn't over yet. We're in midstream. We'll see you in September. They made very clear. Margaret Hoover, thank you. Douglas Brinkley, and we'll be right back. Thanks, Pop.